get it, man, I swear that she can get it, say it. Hey guys, it's Aliza and we are back with another episode of Handle That. Today we have Bridget. Do you, do you go by your government? I be feeling... Uh, my government. Do you go by Bridget or do you like people calling you like Smith? Right now, it's up for debate, but I feel like personally, I go by Bridget. Professionally, and if I only know you as like an acquaintance, I go by Smith. So Smith to y'all, Bridget to me. Bridget to <laughs> Period. So, when was your first like experience with art and like making art? Um. Well, I grew up dancing ballet. Shut up. Yeah. Which is still, it's honestly crazy because I have not danced in, I mean, like over ten years. But I still very much so identify as a, as dancer. a dancer. Um. So that was like my first introduction to art. Uh, in for like my own self. Yeah. Um, but my dad is an artist. Really? So growing up, he would like watercolor paint people's houses and do charcoal drawings, with, like portraits. Mm. He drew and created comic book series for my sister and I. That's cute. Go dad. So I always like had an interest in art because of him. Mm -hmm. um, and then in high school, I stopped dancing ballet and I started dancing at my high school. Um, and the art teacher at my high school was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, I Still to this day, like I follow her on Instagram. She comments on my stuff, like I love her. I love that. Uh, so she had a really big impact on me too. And just like the physical art and not the dancing. Cause I didn't yeah. really, like I always knew I was good at art mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. Because I was always like drawing stuff and like coloring books, like going crazy. But like, it wasn't until I had that art teacher. They kind of gave you the confidence. Yeah. And to like try things. Um, and just like not, it doesn't always have to be perfect and it's not gonna look like everybody else's. Cause I had, we had some insane people that I went to high school with who yeah. were just like, talented, could draw a photorealistic. Girl, I wish. A pencil drawing, like it was crazy. Hmm, I wish I could draw. I mean, I guess I kind of do cause I draw on fingernails, but like I see other people's stuff, I'm like, how the fuck are you doing that? But you know. What do they say? Like comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, that's literally the story of my life because I most definitely compare mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, I do too. Do you feel like you can get more out of like a photo or like dealing with like bodies instead of like flowers? Do you feel like there's like like the range is what's like throwing you? Well, honestly, it kind of surprised me working on the flowers because. I actually was like, the, I'm obsessed with this. Yeah. Like I love how um, it kind of helped me like zoom in on certain parts of the photo and then like put my own. A little spin on it. Yeah. I feel like you do a lot of collaborations. I feel like the first time I saw your stuff is when you worked with Aria with those like photos of Michelle. I was like, who did that? Mm -hmm. At first I was like, oh, Aria did this? Like not my friend Smith. I'm like, who was that? That sounds like not a real person. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> a figure of your imagination. I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's crazy. Cause it was that. And then it was like her other one it was like the Veronica experience. Mm -hmm. You do that too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I owe a lot of my Smith only career to Aria. I mean, she was really the first person who helped me. Like I would not have shown work at fees if it wasn't for her. Like mm -hmm. I would not have I mean, like she's put me on and propped me up in so many ways that I'm just like really, really thankful for. But yeah, I think my, pro I mean, my process normally starts with a photograph, like something that I either took or sourced or someone took for me. 
Um, and I let that be the inspiration a lot of times. And so I feel like that just is life, kind yeah. of. And like my first kind of mixed media series, like right out when I showed work at Butler, it was all like self shot nudes. That's a lot of your stuff just And a lot right? of it is, yeah, and a lot of it still is that. Um, because I just l enjoy showing uh, like a more intimate side, not necessarily of myself, but just like being intimate in general, just being vulnerable with people. Yeah. That's understandable because I feel like a lot of people aren't. I feel like that's something I'm learning is just like be myself and be vulnerable because I'm very much a closed off person. So we try to, you know, open up to people. So what was the piece, the first piece of art that somebody purchased from you? Well, like first first was, oh, dang, I wish I had a photo of it. It was incredible. It was, I hate painting really at the end of the day. It's not my favorite thing at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I painted this angler fish, uh, like the ones with the lights oh, okay. that dangle from their heads. Mm -hmm. um, but it was mostly like yellows and purples and like a bunch of bright colors. And the art history professor bought that from me. Really? Um, so it was like the very first piece that I ever sold. So this show that you have coming up is more like a collaborative show. Mm -hmm. Do you want like to have your own show? So I can just like your stuff? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, Ari and I have talked about um, having a, again, like a joint show, but I feel like it would be more me with her because so much of my art career um, like recently has been with her and because of her and I just love working on her photos, so. Mm -hmm. um, but we've talked about doing a show together that would be like She Presents, Smith Only and V Knox, and mm -hmm. half of it would be my work and half of it would be her work. Mm -hmm. And then we would have kind of like a She pop-up as a part of it. So that is also in the works and likely to be coming soon. Period. So was she like, do you guys kind of like traveling to states that are legal to like test stuff out? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, I think eventually. Yeah. I think, so I think we both kind of right now think of the brand a little bit differently. And I think we're currently working on like tightening that up a bit. Uh, I think of it very much so as like product, uh, product focused, not in an herb sense. Okay. And she thinks of it more in like, how can we eventually be actually selling weed and having our own strain, mm -hmm. which I would love for that to happen. But to me, the brand is more about like the tools that you use to unwind. So mm -hmm. is that weed? Great if it is. Mm -hmm. Is it taking a bath? Is it lighting a candle? Is it stretching or exercising? Is it taking a walk? Is mm -hmm. it having a glass of wine? Like, what are the things specifically as a woman, but to anyone, what are the things that help you unwind? She is here for that. Period. So why is art important to you? Um, it's important to me because it helps me get pent up emotions out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a way for me to express myself when I feel like I'm kind of a like quiet and to myself kind of person. So it gives me, yeah, like a way to get certain energy out yeah. into the world. I feel like it's a good way for people to know who you are. Cause obviously I don't know who you were until I met you, which I don't even know when, where we met. I met you at A Thousand Words at your show. Oh yeah, cause and I'm like, I know you. And I remember <laughs> meeting you and like you, we hugged each other and I was just like, yeah. This is a great person. Oh my god! Like you just made me immediately feel like 
Well, you just made me feel like you had known me, you know? Because I felt like I did. I was like, I know this person. And I was like, that's wild. But I know this person. No, because I feel like some people just have that energy. You're just like, you're good people. Mm -hmm. You like, you don't make me question anything. You're not like, I don't know about this one. (laughs) You know? Yeah, for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think art is important in general because... Art can be so many different things. And I think in general, it's a way to like get pent out feelings out and like emotions out in a positive way. And I think it's important for people to know that so many things are considered art. And so whether it's like coloring in a coloring book or picking up stickers and putting them on a piece of paper or putting them on a wall or like it, it can really be anything. And I think that is uh, something about my art specifically that like you might look at it and be like, oh, this is so crazy. I could never do this. And yeah, you can never do exactly what I do. But like a lot of the elements of my art and the materials that I use are very accessible because I want people to see that you can use post-it notes and photographs that you printed off at Walgreens and a needle and thread and make something crazy. And you don't have to have all of these like super expensive tools to do that. So you were saying that you wanna go to school for business now. Yeah. So do you feel like you need school to be an artist? I feel so conflicted about higher education currently. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because of like the way the world is now and how virtual everything has become. I I have arguments either way. Mm-hmm. I think school, especially higher education, at least to me, has a lot to do with learning how to be an adult and be on your own. And you learn how to communicate with a lot of different people. And uh, it puts you in uncomfortable positions but I also think like I'm a mentor for big brothers big sisters and like my little is 18 now and she's about to go off to college herself and I just think about like her life experience compared to mine and I'm like you've already faced so many trials and tribulations so like and and so much adversity and so with someone like that, I'm like, you have you have kind of already had these life experiences that have forced you to have to learn how to communicate and X, Y, Z. Yeah. So I, I really do think it's like a case by case basis. Mm-hmm. I don't think by any means you have to go to school to be an artist. Mm-hmm. I think so many people don't. And I think some of the most successful artists didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, But I think there are definitely reasons why you should. And if I were to talk to someone and be mentoring them from an art perspective, like I said, like I would try and lead them in a direction that makes them understand that you're gonna need so much more than just the ability to make art. Like you need to understand how to talk about your art, how to market your art, how to sell your art. You need to learn the business behind that and how to maintain a business and how like finances work and accounting and all of that. So I do feel like you, you, you can learn that without going to school, but I think those kinds of things are built into school in a lot of ways. It's like you gotta take what you need from the situation most Mm -hmm. of the time. Most of the time. So I think for me personally, I would 100%, I would never say, oh, in hindsight, I wouldn't have gone to college or I wouldn't, yeah, have continued studying Um, because I needed those kinds of Like I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone. I came from a very like white, upper middle class background and I needed to be put into situations where I was like humbled and questioned and, you know, knocked down a peg and not everything 
was, not that everything was handed to me, but I needed situations like as an adult. Mm -hmm. Kind of just be like, listen, this is where you at, mm -hmm. look around. It's like most experiences like are there for you to learn from. It's usually n never anything to like be malice. It's more just like, you gotta sit back and take it. It's like either you take what you need from it and just go. Mm -hmm. Life be life in. So, like I mentioned before, when I left Butler, I really felt like I could not be an artist. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had the show at Fees and really with the help of Aria, like I started meeting and networking with people. And I, for a long time, I think it was in, it had to have been 2021. 2020 and 2021, I started like really going out of my comfort zone and going to art events by myself, like mm. totally alone and just walking up to random people and talking to them. And so that is my biggest piece of advice if you are starting out as an artist is to find the art spaces in whatever city it is and just make a habit of going and it can be the same few places you know repeated over and over again um, but there's always going to be someone different there because that is the nature of art it's I just feel like ever evolving and changing and people are entering and exiting the space and so you're always gonna meet someone different no matter what. Um, but yeah, it would just be like putting yourself out there and meeting people and feeling comfortable in like saying, oh, I'm an artist too. Like here's a business card or here's my social media or here's my website. Um, Cause yeah, I feel like that's how so many people know me now mm -hmm. is from that period. And I definitely have gotten away from that a little bit because now working retail, like my job all day is talking and meeting strangers. So my um, kind of social battery it's kinda is not the same. not the same as it once was. But for someone just starting out, like I say, put the effort into that, put the effort into networking and meeting people and sharing ideas. Because overall, like that made me feel, A, just better in general about life, about my mental health. And then it also made me realize that like so many artists are in a very similar position and that like you're not behind or wherever you at wherever you're at is okay mm -hmm. and there's always going to be someone at that same level a level slightly above you and a level slightly ab uh, below you and you can learn something from all of them all those people absolutely yeah i have no work life balance but at the same time i love my work i love being at work i love the people that i work with uh, I do love like the social aspect of working retail. So uh, as much as like I, then I don't feel like I have the capacity to like go out and do networking things and like art things yeah. necessarily. Like it still fills my cup in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I also think like just as someone who's starting a business, like the days that I do have off are not really off days because like I'm working the whole day. Yeah. So yeah, no balance, just on mm -hmm. all the time. Which is fine. Like I am, I en I'm enjoying this season of life, and like I feel like it's all gonna be worth it. Mm -hmm. And it really does feel like Arya and I both are like hustling for something that we know is gonna be way bigger than us. Yeah. Period. You have to put the work in. You gotta put the work in to get to where you wanna go. But yeah, I mean, like I work forty hours. At West Elm, I work part time for uh, Mixo Indie, which is a small business here. She uh, has her own mixology. She comes to your house and does like private events and teaches you how to make cocktails. So I run her whole social media. Um, so I'm with her one day a week, and then 
on my other day off, I'm with Aria and a lot of afternoons, if I get off early, I'm with Aria, so. Busy girl. Cause you a boss bitch. I am. Is there anything you want to tell the people? What are your socials? What are the socials, girl? Well, you can find me at Smith Only. Um, you can follow she at she for Nelia. Period. Cause it's paraphernalia, baby. Mm-hmm. And that's that. Second, every minute, man, I swear that she can get it. Sam, you a bad bitch, put your hands up high. Hands up high, hands up high. Tell them to the lights down right now. Put me in the booth. I'm talking about dark booth. Purple Go, go. I recognize your fragrance. Hold up, you ain't never gotta say shit. Mm. And I know your taste is a little bit mm, high maintenance. Mm. Everybody else pays.